Can I just say this today? Hey, good morning, my brothers and sisters of the Mount Eret family. It's good to have you here today. I want to welcome my online family. You know, this is the hard part. I just love interactions of Sundays, and so I need you to help me a little bit today. I don't know where you're watching from, but right now, would you just participate for a minute in that chat right there? Would you just let us know where you're watching from, especially if you're watching outside of our area? We just love to see how far and wide God's message is being reached reach through Mount Ararat and beyond these walls and beyond this community. And so let us know where you're watching from. Well, listen, I I count it an honor to be able to speak into your life this morning. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for letting me be your pastor right here in this moment. Before I begin my message, I want to share with you just a psalm of hope. Turn with me to Psalm chapter 46. As you turn to that Psalm 46, I know that there's a lot of things that are uncertain right now, and I want you to know some things that we can trust as an anchor in our lives today. It says this in Psalm 46, God tells us, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. And then I look at this verse 10, and this is just so rich to me. This writer says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Listen, right now, wherever you're watching, right now, I don't know if you're watching in community, if you're watching with family, if you're watching all by yourself. Listen, whatever you're doing right now, if you're doing another activity, just stop for a minute. Stop, stop right now. I don't even want you talking right now. Come on, just be still just for a minute. Go with me just for a minute. Trust me for a minute. Be still. Are you afraid of silence? I wonder in the last 30 days, this last month, what emotions have surfaced during this quarantine? What are you feeling right now? You out there feeling today, are you still feeling some fear? You feeling some fatigue? You feeling some hope? Are you feeling rested? Are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling lonely? Right now in your own relationships, what's happening with your friends? What's happening with your family? What's happening in your marriage? What's happening with your kids? Or what's happening with your parents? With school and work coming to a stop for many of us, what does school and work say to you? What's going on right now within your finances? Come on, let's look at this verse again. Be still and know that I am God. Come on, say that out loud with me. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46, 10. You know, I wonder if you are afraid, if we are afraid of slowing down, if we're afraid, if we're afraid of sitting still, if we actually are afraid of some silence. I wonder... I wonder if before COVID-19, you would have been the very one that would have said, I just don't have time to get it all done. I wonder if you're the one out there that would have said, my tasks and all of my to-do list keep me so busy that I never get a chance to myself. I never get a chance to sit down and to be still. I could hear you right now. Come on, have you seen my schedule? 
That's what we would have said about a month ago, wouldn't we? Yet, before a month ago, our greatest problem is, is that we didn't have time. We didn't have time. And yet, a month ago, all non-essential workers, schools shut down, and everybody was quarantined to their home. And here we are a month later, and we got nothing but time. <laughs> and, and what we're coming to realize is our problem wasn't needing more time. Matter of fact, I bet if we're real honest, all this new time that we've gained, we've already filled it back up with other things. I think about, I think about what we've given our time to because I believe this. We are so addicted to demanding jobs, overpacked schedules, and constant busyness that a sudden stop can feel scary. And when it gets quiet, I need to turn something on. I need to turn the TV on. I need to turn the Netflix on. I need to turn Hulu, Amazon Prime. I, I need to turn it on. I need to, something to escape, right, from all of my silence. I even heard this, that millions of Americans have watched Tiger King. Really? And then social media activity has gone through the roof. It's like we need something. We need something to what? To, to keep us occupied. I, I have talked to a lot of people that say, you know what? I have, I'm having a tough time going to sleep at night. It's like I don't even, I'm not tired. It's hard to go to bed. And then on the flip side, I hear a lot of people saying, it's hard to get up the next day. It's like without work, without school, without that structure, it's like there's no purpose even getting out of bed. I know in my house of teenagers, when they finally do get up, the first thing out of their mouth is, I'm bored. It's like, this theme, we're so addicted to noise, we're so addicted to activity, we're so addicted to busyness that many of us hate to be still. And yet, many of us, we struggle with silence. Why? Because it's not the pattern of our active, nonstop world that we live in. Listen, last week I began a teaching series called Life Interrupted. And in this pivot of turning to that series, I shared a book that I've been reading by Jenny Allen called Get Out of Your Head. And her quote in the book, I loved it. She said, the greatest spiritual battle that you are in is being fought where? Uh, between your ears. Come on, it's about the brain. It's about the mind. It's about the mindset. And, and as I shared that with you last week, our core verse that we looked at was found in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. I love that. It goes on to say, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his plan for you, right? His good, pleasing, and perfect will. And so as we leaned in last week, it's about tackling our minds. And I told you, we're going to structure this series on three big questions. Here they are again. What's the lie? What's the truth? And what's the one? What's the choice? And in those three questions... We concluded last week that we will not believe the lie that we are just a victim of our circumstances and our situation. We're going to resist that thinking, right? We said that. Instead, we're going to believe that with Jesus, things can actually change. We can actually be transformed. And what he's empowered us to do is to show us that we have a choice. And we're going to choose, we're going to choose to interrupt our emotional thinking, especially when it leads to a wrong conclusion. And so we're going to do this again today. Listen, as we lean in today, I want you to turn with me. Come on, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 10. Actually, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, as you're turning there, let me give you a little bit of background that will give some context to help you understand what we're reading and kind of how God inspired this man to share these words. 
Now, to share this with you, Paul is a missionary. And he is writing a series of letters back to a church in Corinth. We call it 1st and 2nd Corinthians are the letters. Now, in these letters, what we're finding is underneath the surface is there's this group back in the church of Corinth that's attacking Paul. I I mean, this is kind of crazy stuff. I know that never happens in churches in our day and age. But this little group says, we're going to go after Paul. They can't stop talking smack about Paul. And here's what they have to say about this leader. They said, they said, Paul, he acts like he's something big. He's all bold and he's all strong in his letters. But when he shows up on the scene and he starts to preach, come on, he's really not that impressive. I was thinking about that in real time, that right now every church has gone digital. You know what I realize is, is on Sundays right now you might be watching me and if you just only knew, there are thousands of preachers that are so much better than me. That's the insecurity of a pastor is that you could, you could be watching the greats now and go, well, why in the world am I watching Pastor Todd at Mount Ararat when I could be watching someone else? Well, you know what? This is kind of what's happening right now. They're saying Paul's bold in his letters, but he's surely kind of weak when he comes in person. You see, there's a crisis happening in the church, and they're trying to discredit the leader. And then as they come forward in this, I want you to see this, is is that the criticism is personal. It's personal. Listen, we all say we want feedback until when? Until we get feedback. And then it's like, oh, man, ouch, that didn't feel good. But yet in this feedback, it would be easy for Paul to get defensive It would be easy for Paul to try to fight back against this group and about their criticism. But see, he knows this is a young church, and he knows this young church is in crisis. And Paul knows even his own leadership is in crisis. He's being personally attacked. I want you to understand that. Now listen to the words. And look at how God leads Paul to respond. This is so beautiful. Look at verse 1. By humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you. Come on, isn't that how you approach your boss when you're mad at him or her? Come on, by humility and gentleness. Isn't that how you confront your spouse when you're mad at them? With humility and gentleness? Well, that's what Paul says. I appeal to you through that. I, Paul, who am timid, when face to face with you, but bold toward you when I'm away. I beg that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think that they live by the standards of this world. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. No, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds when we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And then here's the verse we used last week. And we take captive every thought and we make it obedient to Christ. Come on, is that not good? Last week when we talked about this passage, uh, we talked about having the right mindset in relationship to the pattern of this world. Well, today we're going to talk about that mindset again, but we're going to talk about the standards of this world. And as we look at that, Paul is talking and writing to Christians. I think that's an important detail you need to know about. He's talking to people that are already believers. Because here's what I want him, he's wanting them to see. He's wanting them to see that in every situation there is an earthly situation and at the same time there is also a spiritual reality. There's an earthly reality and a spiritual reality. And he wants them to see that. You see, our enemy only wants us to focus on the earthly and wants us to ignore the spiritual. Yet Paul, he's trying to help them to see something here. Listen, Paul doesn't fight fire with fire though. He doesn't come out of the gates trying to defend himself. No, instead, what does he do? He humbles himself. 
He humbles himself. He lays himself down. And then he points to where the real battle is. It's not about the earthly. It's about the spiritual. Pay attention to that. In another letter to Ephesians, what does he say? He says, our struggle is not against people. Come on, it's not against flesh and blood, but it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against every spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Can I tell you boldly today, our enemy is not COVID-19. Our enemy, our enemy is not quarantine. Our enemy is not sickness. Our enemy is not death. Our enemy is sin. Our enemy is sin against a God that loves us. And the battle against sin begins, it begins in our mind. And it's why we must take every thought captive. You see, when we don't, when we don't, then our thoughts will begin to spiral. They'll begin to spiral. Remember that last week we talked about the spiral? We'll start to feel something. And I'm not saying there's not some truth to it. I'm not saying there's not some reality to it. It's real. Don't ignore it. But don't let emotion be the driver of your life. Take that emotion somewhere else because if you don't, that emotion will take you on a ride. Look at the ride. That emotion will begin to impact what you think in your life. And you'll begin to make some assumptions. You'll begin to come to some conclusions about things that might not be right, that might not be true. And then guess what those thoughts will begin to do? They'll begin to shape your behavior. And your behavior will begin to impact the people in your life, the relationships. And it will lead you to a consequence. Our emotions will spiral. And he says, you got you to take those thoughts captive Listen, our enemy, let me just go ahead and point this out to you. He doesn't fight fair. He's got some weapons that he's using against you and against me. And I just want to clearly give you those weapons right now. I want to give you the weapons of distraction that our enemy loves to use. Can I tell you what those weapons are? They're, they're busyness. Their noise and their constant activity. Come on. Anybody familiar with those weapons in your life right now? Because he's going to use them. He's going to use them. Let's get real real with our emotions right now. Let's go back to this next spiraling look. Look at this next trap right here in the emotion. Let's just go ahead and be honest right now. Because our patterns are wrecked and because everything's kind of upside down right now, guess what? There's a lot of unfamiliar, there's a lot of discontent going on right now. Let's just own it. We're in uncharted waters. We've never been here before. And that emotion, if it drives you, will lead you to begin to think about some things. I'll just feel better if I can what? Stay distracted. This is why some of you have already filled up your schedule because you need something, something else to give attention to. And that behavior will be, I need some constant things, constantly keeping my mind occupied and entertained and at least numb so I don't have to think about the deeper things that scare me. And those constant inputs lead you to a life of what? Being needy and frantic. Come on, take the hit. Let's own this. And it will eventually lead us to this consequence of Insecurity. You know why I think a lot of people's emotions and anxieties and depressions have been heightened during this last 30 days? is because we're living in a sea of insecurity right now. This is why we've got to come back to the word of God. We've got to come back to the truth. We've got, we got to let Jesus be the one to guide us through what we're feeling, what we're facing right now. Listen, the, the devil, he doesn't want us to be still. The devil wants to keep you and me in chaos. He wins when he keeps us busy and distracted. And I want you to know this because the devil right now, is using this time of quarantine to lie to us. And we got to just wake up to the lie. We got to be real about the lie. Now let me give you some good news today because I, I want to talk straight and away from Scripture and I want it to lead into your life and my life. But I, I need you to know some things here today. Listen, Christians, we don't have to be afraid here in this hour. Listen, I got some good news for you today. Can I get it real personal with you today? Here it is, here it is. God loves you. 
He loves you so much that he sent his own son, Jesus, to this world to live for 33 years a perfect life. Come on, Jesus never made a mistake. And God loved you so much that he sent Jesus to the cross. He lived a sinless life, yet he died a sinner's death. And he died so that he could pay for sin and he could pay for all the consequences that sin brings into this world. And then he was buried in a tomb. The Bible tells us that three days later, he rose from the dead. And because he rose, he rose to give new life. Is that not powerful? This is what's possible because of Jesus. In Jesus, you and I can have this new life. And here's the best part. I love this part. And we miss it so much that one of the gifts that we gain when we give our lives to Christ is that we get a new ability to see, a new ability to think and understand. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse, uh, what is it? Verse uh, 16, it says this. It says, who has not known the mind of the Lord so to instruct him? And then he goes further. He says, but we, come on Christians, but we, come on church, come on, but we believers, we have the mind of Christ. Is that not rich? You and I have the ability to see and to see and understand like Jesus. We have the mind of Christ. But here again, here again, listen to me. Be still and know that I am God. But see, here's the trouble. You and I are afraid of silence. Can I push a little far, farther here right now? Come on, let me push a little harder, a little farther. Why are you afraid? Are you afraid of what the silence will reveal? Are you afraid of what will show up when things get quiet? Are you afraid of what God will say to you? Listen to me. I know you didn't predict these last 30 days, but you know what? God is not surprised because God is sovereign. And what if right now God wants you to walk in a valley? God wants you to experience this trial. God wants you to maybe experience some suffering. I know that messes up some of your theology. What if right now you're in a, a season where there has been some things you've lost? Maybe you're in a season where you have lost someone you love. And God says right now, it's time to lament. It's time to embrace that hurt so that you can give that hurt over to the Lord. Listen, don't be afraid of walking through pain because the promise of Scripture is you're not alone. God's with you. Don't be afraid to walk with him through it. What if this is the season when things get quiet enough where you get open enough and honest enough for God to reveal that there's some mistakes going on right now in your life. There is some sin going on right now in your life. You know what the Bible calls believers to do with sin? To confess, to take responsibility for a mistake, to own it, to say, God, I am so wrong, and tell him what you're wrong for. The Bible says to turn away from it. That's called repent. What if this is a season for you to confess and repent? Why? So that you could be made whole again. What a gift that could be for your spiritual life. But here's the scariest part. Some of you are afraid for things to get silent because you're afraid of what you are going to say to you. You know who the greatest critics are in our lives? It's us. It's in that silence sometimes that we begin to replay the things in our past that we never seem to get past. It's in that silence we begin to make some assumptions about life. We begin to come to some conclusions that may not be true. It's in that silence that we'll do that rumination thing. It's in that silence that we'll begin to play worst case scenario. And we always win at that, don't we? Maybe you're afraid of things getting quiet because of how you self-talk to yourself. Some of you are the ones that are defeating your own lives. Come on, let's not miss this moment. God is doing something here in this season, and it's time to pivot back to him. Listen, when things get quiet, 
do you get overwhelmed? Today, I titled today's message, Who Do You Think You Are? And there's a lot of ways you can play that. But today, I want to go there and ask, are you right now overwhelmed? Matter of fact, let's take that thought captive today. Let's put it up here on the screen. Let's take that. Let's do a little exercise that Jenny Allen shows us in her book about how to take it captive. Because here's what I know about being overwhelmed. 30 days ago, you would have shared you were overwhelmed because you've got an overcommitted, overpacked life. And now 30 days later, you're not overwhelmed by your schedule. You might be overwhelmed with this fear of the unknown. Now you're overwhelmed with how much longer is this going to last and what damage is going to be done because of this happening. And now all of a sudden, we can get paralyzed in this emotional thought. Now you can let overwhelm take the spiral down and you saw where it'll lead. We could take this thought captive. Listen, let's talk about some inputs in your life because there's some things around this that we got to pay attention to. And let me show you here on the screen. There's some inputs, and maybe these are true for you, maybe they're not. Maybe you could fill in your own input around. But let's just take work, and if you're a student, let's take school. Right now, maybe this is very different to evaluate this today because of where we are right now. But let's just kind of go there for a minute. Right now, do you feel disconnected from work? Do you feel disconnected from school? Right now, do you have a coworker that you're in conflict with? Right now, are you in a job that just doesn't feel like a fit? Right now, what's happening in that space of contribution in your life? Is that contributing to this emotion here? What about this and friends right now? I think about that. You know, praise God we got all this technology where we can still kind of Google chat and FaceTime and do all these different things. But, but right now with friends, do you feel like you're distant from friendships right now? Does things feel strange because you can't get together with people that you normally interact with? I know there's been some people in our church that have older people in their family and they can't go physically be with them and get near them because they don't want to make them more vulnerable. And this is hard when you can't hug the people that you want to hug in your life. So your friends and family, what's going on there? And maybe right now there's, this has brought a closeness to your home. Maybe brought a closeness to this relationship because you're gaining some more time with your own house and family. What about this, health and body? This is a big one. And I know we kind of joke about when people are stressed, people can turn to food, but that is a reality. And I wonder right now if maybe this is a reality of you looking in the mirror and thinking, I don't like how I look. I don't like how I feel. And right now, this is just kind of, listen, I'm not trying to be funny here. I keep hearing the word flatten the curve. And I know what it's talking about in terms of the movement of COVID, but I think flatten the curve, oh man, this could hit this real quick. And I think about how we all struggle. But then I think about what an amazing few weeks of weather we've had. And I've watched more people, more families outside. And I think there's got to be something beneficial like that. So maybe right now you're feeling a little bit better about your life because you've given some more time to it because you've gained some of that back. What is this right now? Is it contributing to this or is it maybe battling this? And then one last area of faith. Man, I think this could be such a powerful time for us spiritually. Man, I'm loving watching our groups gather in Zoom. Listen, I love watching my teenagers go and call their group and be online with their small group leader and their other group in their class and just laughing and connecting and reading scripture and praying. There's something that could be rich in this. But I wonder right now if somebody would say, you know what, I feel distant from God, I feel dry. I feel disconnected. Come on, can we look at this? Now let me talk about taking something captive because here's an exercise that I'm giving you that's trying to be practical in nature. Number one, step one, here's what we do. You have to, you have to ask the question, what are my thoughts? What are my feelings? What are my emotions? Come on, that's step one. But step two is I got to now turn this over to the Lord i got to talk to God about this. 
When's the last time you talked to God about your work life? When's the last time you talked to God about your friends and your family? When's the last time you shared those things about your own personal identity and your look and your fitness and your health? When's the last time you said, God, I'm really struggling and I want to be closer? When's the last time you worshiped him? And then as you look at this idea, step three is to start to notice the patterns of your thoughts. <laughs> Let me ask you a few questions here. Are you worrying about things that you cannot control? Are you angry about someone who has wronged you? Are you obsessed about what you don't have? Are you, has food, has sex, has money, has entertainment consumed your thoughts? And then here's another question. Are you feeling shame about the past? You see, I wonder right now, can God gain your attention during life interrupted? That's what I've been praying for. God, as we lead our church, as we lead the mount, and anybody that leans in with us, can we lead them to you, God, so that they will get your attention and you will get their attention during life interrupted? erupted. Can I challenge you right now? Don't be afraid of being still. Hey, today I got a little bonus feature for you. Uh, this week I reached out to Clayton King. Come on, we all love Clayton King. Clayton King's an evangelist that comes and preaches a couple times a year for us. And he's down in South Carolina, a part of a church called New Spring. And he's part of a ministry called Crossroads. And I just wanted to reach out to him. I was actually going to try to bring him in in the month of May. And of course, everything has changed. And so we're going to wait till the fall to try to get him rescheduled. But you know what I thought? Because we love Clayton and he's such a spiritual leader in our church as well when he's here, I wanted to ask, how is his family doing down in South Carolina? So join me as we join a conversation with the King family. Come on, watch this. Hey, listen to me. Don't turn this thing off yet. In the last few minutes that I have left with you, I want to give you a structure of how to have a quiet time with God. To me, this idea of learning to use this silence, learning to use this time to leverage it, to lead us into the presence of God is so key. I want you to know how we can have a quiet time. Turn with me to another passage of scripture. It's James chapter 4. Now, James is the half-brother to Jesus, and I love how direct he is about what this time can look like when we let Jesus lead our hearts. So let's just look at a few verses here. James chapter 4, verse 6 it says this, but he gives us more grace. And this is why the scripture says, God opposes the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. Come on, there's a theme working here. Come on, Paul talked about humility, and now we got James talking about humility versus pride. And then here's what he says. Look at this. Submit yourselves then to God. And then he gives us another action here. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come on, come near to God, and look at the promise, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands. See, it's biblical. Right now, tell the people in your house, wash your hands. Come on, wash your hands. Wash your hands. It's right here in the Bible. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Listen, look at verse 10. Humble yourselves before the Lord. Come on, bow down before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Is that not strong today? Listen to me. Just like Paul, James realizes that our minds, our minds have walls of resistance. And I want you to know that pride, pride is one of those huge mental walls that keeps you and I from trusting, from fully trusting God. And I want you to see this. 
Because within all of us, there's this selfish bent to be right. There's this selfish bent to be in charge. And there's this selfish bent to want to be in control. And if there's anything about this season, there's so much that we don't control. Isn't that true? And I'm telling you, pride plays right into the devil's hands. But here's the remedy. The remedy to pride is humility. It's humility. What does it look like? He says, submit to God. Come on. Surrender those fears to God. Give that emotion to God. Trust God with your questions. Trust God with your concerns. Trust God with your sin. Trust God with your past. Trust God. Submit to him. And you know what that means? It means to focus. It means to be single-minded. There's something about the power of this because the other part of this is to resist the devil. Now remember, come on, what are the devil's weapons? What is his weapons of distraction? Come on, do you remember what they are? What is it? It's busyness, it's noise, and it's constant activity. That is his weapons. we got to resist that, and, and he will flee. But here's some good news today. Guess what? If, if we go, actually, here, let's start with the bad news for a minute. If we fall victim to those weapons, the writer James says it leads us to be double-minded. Isn't that interesting language? Yet, submitting to God makes us single-minded, and, and going the way of the enemy makes us double-minded minded a divided house that's the bad news but let me let me jump to this the good news is is God has weapons too did y'all know that I love it God has given us spiritual weapons to help us help our minds as we move forward let me give you the three weapons real quick here they are Come on. He gives us the weapon of prayer prayer is talking and listening and connecting with God Let me give you another weapon. It's called God's word. Come on, the Bible calls it the sword of the spirit. We need the scriptures, right? The word of God to tell us the truth when the enemy wants to lie to us. And then to get better, this idea of worship. Come on, that's how we fight our battles. Isn't that what we sing? This is how we fight our battles. Listen, you know what you and I need to do tomorrow morning? When we get up... We need to have a quiet time. We need to create a moment to encounter God. And in that quiet time, we need to have prayer. We need to have his word. And we need to have worship in our heart and on our lips as we meet with God in that time. Let let me give you an awesome quiet time. It's actually David's quiet time found also in the book of Psalms. Psalm 1. What a powerful psalm. Look Look at his quiet time. Here's what he said as he was talking, connecting, communing with God. He said, blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. No, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord. The one who, look at the word there, who meditates on his law day and day and night day and night come on in the hebrew word this word meditate it means to utter it means to speak (laughs) this is so cool this is so cool listen to me in other words we're supposed to self-talk to ourselves in the seasons listen we're supposed to self-talk the word of god to ourselves in the tough seasons we're supposed to self-talk and and as we self-talk the word of god it leads us closer to the truth of who god is it leads us to the truth of our situation and it leads us to 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 begin to experience joy and peace that transcends no matter what our circumstances say You see, we're always self-talking. The question is, is what self-talk is coming out? We can self-talk ourselves into misery or into joy. Come on, you and I get to choose. We get to make a choice. And I want you to see this because tomorrow morning, the devil is going to try to make you distracted. And here's the power. You have a choice. You have a choice. Will you choose to be still 
with God. Listen, look at what that choice can mean for your life and my life. Look again here at this choice. Listen, the emotion, we're all feeling it right now. We feel unsettled. We feel discontent. This is not the way we normally live life. Listen, I get that. But you know what? I can choose. You can choose. We can choose. And we can choose to what? To be still. To be still. And when we do that, guess what we begin to think? Only being with God can truly satisfy me. Man, don't we need that reminder today when all you know what's breaking loose? I need to know I can still find myself in him no matter what's happening. And listen, that leads me to what? Some obedience in my life, some behavior in my life. Now all of a sudden I'm focusing on prayer. Now all of a sudden I'm meditating on scripture. Now all of a sudden something's changing within me. Listen, I've all of a sudden I can start to demonstrate peace and joy. And, and everybody's going to look at me and go, where's that found? Where are you drawing that from? What's the hope that you have that I'm obviously missing? And it's in that kind of behavior we begin to impact our relationships. Come on, parents. You want to bring calm and reassurance to your home? Get in that word of God and watch what God can begin to do in and through you. And when you begin to live like that, guess what? There's a different reality that's possible. You and I can begin to experience the security that's found in a right relationship with him. I'm going to ask my worship team to come back up. And as they're coming back out to lead us in this final declaration, come on, don't, don't tune off yet. I know that's the temptation when we're watching in the comfort of our own spaces and homes and on our phones. It's easy to go, I'm going to take this part and I'm going to turn this part off. Listen, I want you to experience all that God's talking to us about here in this holy moment. So do not push away. Do not miss what God is showing and what God is saying right here, right now in this moment with us. Listen, I want to declare some things over our lives today, and I want you to see this again. Look at me. Capturing our thoughts, capturing our thoughts and believing the truth can begin to shape and transform our, our every aspect of our life. Capturing our thoughts and believing in the truth can shape us to begin to experience joy and peace that transcends our situation and our circumstances. I just believe this to be true by experience and by the truth of the promises of the Word of God. You may be going, well, how is that possible? How is that possible? How can I experience that kind of life? How can I experience that kind of peace? How can I experience that kind of victory? I can tell you why. It's because of Jesus. It's because of Jesus on the cross. On that cross, Jesus defeated sin. Jesus defeated the devil. And Jesus defeated death. And on that cross, he died. He was buried. And he rose again. Why? So that he could give new life. Do you know that in a relationship with Jesus, we gain new life? Oh, and we also gain power. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is now residing in us. And guess what that power does? It empowers you and I. It empowers you and I to be able to take every thought captive. It empowers you and I to be able to choose to walk in the obedience with the Holy Spirit. You and I gain something in a relationship with Jesus. So can I ask you, no matter where you're watching from today, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Listen, I believe there's somebody here watching today, that's the cry of your life. You don't have this relationship. It's not personal yet for you, but, but I want you to know something today. It can be Jesus is willing today to reveal himself to you. I just know that today. Jesus is willing today. And you know there's a better part of this. He's not just willing, Jesus is able. That's an important part. He's willing and able today to save you. 
I don't know how old you are. I don't know how long you've resisted. I don't know what rebellion path you've been on. I know this today. He loves you. He's reaching right now to you. He's willing. He's able to save. I want to ask you right now, right here, right now, to be still and to know that he is God. Come on, every heart, every life, bow your heads and your hearts with me today. In faith today, God is reaching. In faith today, God is speaking. In faith today, God's trying to awaken the church. He's trying to show them this interruption has some purpose to it. This interruption I can use. This interruption, I can draw your attention back to me. This interruption, I don't just get your attention, I can get your affection. Hey, Christian out there today, are you walking with God right now? Or did God need you to stop in your tracks and for you today to turn back to Him? I wonder who needs to confess and repent some sin today. Would you trust God today in that area of your life? Come on, let there be some good come out of this quarantine for you and your relationship with Him. It's time to draw back home. It's time to return. It's time to believe. It's time to walk again. Come on, Christian. It's time. It's time. But what I love is that we're a church of invitation. Somebody right here today is about to begin a relationship with Jesus. Who am I talking to today? It's you. Right there where you are. Would you just say these words to God? Say, God, I need you. I believe Jesus was your son. I believe he died on the cross for my sin. I believe he's the only one that can save me. I am a sinner and I need a savior. Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I'm yours and I'm all in. Thank you, God, for saving me. God, I thank you. I thank you for prayer. I thank you for believing and for people today that just received a relationship with you. Now, God, would you help them to see it's now a new life in Christ. It's just a beginning. So now it's time to walk. It's time to live. God, may they let us know right now. Would they just click that button right now? Say, right now, I just gave my life to Jesus. That was me. That was me. If they step out of anonymity, today we're going to send them a copy of your word, God. Because, God, it's through prayer, it's through your word, and it's through worship that we fight against those weapons of distraction. God, lead your church today as we're walking with you during this season of uncertainty. You are the certain one, Jesus, and we pray this in your great name. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Come on, let's stand and sing together in our houses or wherever we're watching. Let's sing, let's sing like we're saved.